1964 Ford Fairlane Thunderbolt. It's a one of 100 built, half were automatics and half were four speeds. There's a debate on exactly half or 48 and 52, something like that, but there were only 100 of them made. Um, so this is an original Thunderbolt. Carl actually drove one back in his early days of drag racing. He had owned one and drove it. That's why he was excited to get this car. One of the names that was prominent with racing in this area was Carl Moyer. You know, he bought one of these cars new back in 1964. Ford Motor Company hired a company by the name of uh, Dearborn Steel. And back in the day, uh, these bodies were delivered to Dearborn and what they were is a 64 Ford Fairlane. And the bodies were just bare. They had no seam sealer in them. They had no undercoat in them. Anything that would add weight to the car, they didn't put it in there. I mean, the cars were the state of the art back then, but you know, cars by today's standards, they were pretty primitive. Um, you know, and, and they ended up sticking a great big motor in them, the 427 to compete in an NHRA class against the other, you know, the rival Chevrolet and uh, Mopar. So when this car debuted, and they put some big name drivers in them back then, this car from coast to coast, it set the standard. Working on the Ford here uh, was a lot of just repairing and cleaning up old stuff that was either done poorly or rusted. Uh, it wasn't a lot of customization, just fixing stuff to make it more presentable and usable, um, whether it be torch cuts or hammer marks or just grinders, stuff that somebody did in a racing kind of field that was more get it done rather than have it look good and work well. Carl's uh, pretty hands-on, so he's in here telling us um, things that he wants or he needs, or he's calling us and telling us throughout the day. Um, it, it's not something like other customers are kind of leave a lot of that stuff up to us. Carl knows exactly what he wants, and it's real easy because I've been working here for 16 years that I know what he wants a lot of that stuff too. So this car was right along those lines. He wanted everything to be perfect, even better than it was from the factory finish-wise, um, even though places that were pounded in, like the rear quarters that were pounded to put wider tires on. He wanted that left because that's what they did back in the day from the factory to there. Um, the fiberglass fenders were still the original fiberglass fenders, original fiberglass hood, um, aluminum front bumper, but they just had to be bodywork perfect. Uh, so fiberglass just takes some extra work to do to get it right and straight. These kind of cars, when they're done this way, you, can't, you gotta hand block, you gotta hand block almost everything. There's not a lot of DA work on this. It doesn't give you a good outcome. So everything's basically hand blocked and all the body lines are, are taped and made sure they're true and straight. And you got to stand back and check them, hang all the trim and make sure it's all lined up properly. And if there's an issue, then you got to hand sand it straight. And with this car, the way the body line is, the shape of the contours on the edge of it, there's not really blocks that are made to conform to that, so you got to get creative and then you got to double check your work after you have sanded it smooth and check the reflection and make sure your reflection looks good, your shine lines all look even and everything, so it's not like you can just run a DA down the side of it and it's prepped and ready for paint. So it's definitely a big process of sanding it gently and not gouging into anything because then you got a bigger problem on your hands. Back in the day in 60, 64, they didn't have unleaded fuel. So uh, like the exhaust seats and the cylinder heads, uh, they were just regular cast. They were not hardened exhaust seats like there is today. So we usually replace the guides in the seats with a hardened exhaust seat and a new exhaust valve that'll work with today's unleaded fuels. So we decided to look for aluminum block, heads and so forth, and uh, Carol Shelby's place was where we ended up. They had some really good bolt-on cylinder heads, and uh, we utilized those components, and then of course you gotta start finding the crank, the rods, the pistons, everything else for it. So it's a pretty big project this time of year.
cars were race cars, so they all had sponsorship things on the side, and they were all hand-painted back in 64. When we first got this car, we were going to hand-paint it again and do all brushwork and stuff. Um, Carl decided later that he wasn't going to go to the original lacquer style paint and hand lettered on. He wanted to bring it up to the next level. He wanted to do base coat, clear coat. He wanted to put all the art underneath the clear. And uh, since he owns the Ford dealership, he wanted to put his Carl Ford logo on there. And it's a seven color logo. We didn't use any stickers. I actually took his logo, put it on a picture in Photoshop, placed it, sized it, sent it off to him, got it okayed. And when it came back, then I took the logo and I traced it all out and designed it and laid out masks for each separate layer of the color. Um, it started out as seven colors, but it took 12 different masks for each door. It probably took eight to 12 hours of just painting the artwork on the doors, let alone the, the base paint and the clear and everything. So, and then it was buried under five coats of clear so you can't feel it, it's just really smooth. We're pretty much going for uh, performance with this particular engine and lightweight at the same time. It's a 4250 stroke by 4250 bore, which is about a, probably a 480 cubic inch engine. Uh, more bottom end torque than the original Shelby and a lot lighter weight by, by trimming all the aluminum heads, aluminum block and so on. What's neat about it is it's, it's a pretty performancey uh, bolt together engine. There's a lot of stuff, but when we want it to make more performance, we send it out and have time-consuming port work done to it and so on. And this deal, this is basically a bolt-together engine uh, with no extra hand-tuning, and the thing made over 700 horsepower. You can get a 55 Chevy anywhere. You can get, you know, Mustangs everywhere. I'm getting by brand-new bodies for all those cars. You can't buy brand-new stuff for this. This is that car, and we had to fix everything on that car. 